Welcome to worship this morning at First Unitarian Church of Orlando. I'm Lisa Marie, a leader of our young adult group here. In the words of Elizabeth Lerner McClay, as drops of rain that find each other and build a track, a rivulet, a stream, a river, a sea, so are we drawn together, so fortunate to find each other, so we are bound together on this shared passage towards an unknown ocean and eternity. For more information about our congregation, go to www.orlandouu.org or email welcometeam at orlandouu.org. After service today at 1130, all are invited to informal fellowship to gather with each other and chat for about 20 minutes. Or if you're new and have questions about our congregation, you'll enjoy our Welcome Center. Since today is the first Sunday of the month, there is also a special gathering at 1130 for wrestling with our understanding of racism. Today we'll discuss two articles on reparation and redistribution. Here is the link. We'll repeat the links for all these events at the end of service today. As you know, our Share the Plate offering is once a month that benefits the outside organization providing services to the community. This month, it's the Adult Literacy League. Here's more information about how they serve the wider community. Hi, I'm Catherine Vicaro, a longtime volunteer for the Adult Literacy League. Last May, One U members supported the League for the first time through our Share the Plate program. We're honored to have been chosen again for 2021. I'm pleased to report that you were not only generous with your donations, but also with your time. Several One U members have stepped forward to tutor our literacy students. As with all nonprofits, 2020 was a year of challenge and change for the League. Here to tell you more about our progress is Executive Director Gina Solomon. Good morning, members of First Unitarian Church of Orlando. My name is Gina Solomon, and I'm the Executive Director of the Adult Literacy League. And I wanted to thank you for your generous support of our organization uh, over the years. As you may remember, last year we were chosen as one of the Share the Plate recipients and you guys are responsible for raising more than $500 to promote our um, mission of building a literate Central Florida. Thank you so much. Um, our volunteers, our students, and our staff are so grateful for you. Thank you for once again inviting us back to be uh, the Share the Plate recipients for February of 2021. Um, as you may remember, we at the Adult Literacy League teach adults um, in Orange, Osceola, and Seminole counties to read and write and also to speak English. Um, literacy isn't just about the ability to read books, it's about the ability to understand and follow directions on a prescription bottle. It's about being able to communicate with your child's teacher. Um, it's about being able to fill out a job application. And without uh, support from generous uh, community members like you, we wouldn't be able to serve the thousands of adults we're serving every year. So if you wanna make sure that your friends and neighbors in the community are able to read and write and speak English and get their GED and increase their confidence and follow their dreams without fear or inhibition, please consider giving today, adultliteracyleague.org slash donate. And um, we are so grateful. Thank you so much and have a blessed Sunday. Are the various ways you can give to share the plate. In addition to giving to outside organizations, we also remind ourselves each week why we financially support the ministries of this church. 
These events and many others in our congregation remind me what a vibrant, welcoming, and curious community we have here at One U. That's why it's so important to me to continuously support all our community has to offer. So if you'd like to make an offering to support the many ministries of our congregation, go to www.orlandouu.org and click on the donate button in the upper right hand corner, send a text or send a check. It's great to be together. Now let's sing together as we worship. Good morning. I'm Samuel Shaw, Transition Minister. These words from Kimberly Ann Tomza Carlson call us together. It is not by chance that you arrived here today. You have been looking for something larger than yourself. Inside of you, there is a yearning, a calling, a hope for more, a desire for a place of belonging and caring. Through your struggle, someone nurtured you into being, instilling a belief in a shared purpose, a common yet precious resource that belongs to all of us when we share. And so you began seeking a beloved community, a people that does not put fences around love, a community that holds its arms open to possibilities of love, a heart home to nourish your soul, and share your gifts. Welcome home. Welcome to worship. Come, let us worship together. Good morning. We're the Oberholzers. This is Suzanne and I'm Alan. Unitarian Universalists light a chalice at the beginning of worship to set aside time as sacred time. Please say with me our familiar words. In the, the light, light of, of truth, truth and in the warmth of love, we gather to seek, to sustain, and to share. Good morning. I'm Sarah Gray, religious educator here at First Unitarian Church of Orlando. Have you ever heard of the word covenant? You might remember this word back when we were meeting in person in RE, uh, seems like so long ago now. Um, that's something that we usually made together at the beginning of our RE class or at the beginning of the program year. A covenant is an agreement. It's a set of promises made among a group of people. And these are different than rules. Rules are usually made by a person in power uh, outside of the group uh, in order to give some control and some structure. 
and the people who have to follow the rules usually don't have a say in how those rules are made. Instead, a covenant is made between all the people in a group. They are promises that every member of the group makes to one another about what they're going to do when they're together and how they're going to behave and how to create a community where everyone feels safe and welcome. So join me as we read a story together and reflect on the differences between rules and covenants among a group of children on a playground. Rulers of the Playground by Joseph Kiefler One morning, Jonah decided to become ruler of the playground. I am now king of this land, announced Jonah. Promise to obey me, and I'll let you play in my kingdom. Jonah's kingdom had slides, so everyone pinky promised. And just like that, Jonah became king of the playground. King Jonah was skilled. Look at me! In some ways, I order this tree to move. And generous, who is hungry, most of the time. You can share this cracker. Everyone played in King Jonah's kingdom. Everyone except for Lennox. Because she wanted to rule the playground too. This side of the playground is now mine, announced Lennox. Cross your heart and promise to follow my rules. Lennox's kingdom had swings, so they crossed their hearts and promised. And just like that, Lennox became a mighty queen. Queen Lennox was wise. Watch this! In most cases, I totally meant to do that. Impatient. Take your time. Most days. Okay, enough already! Everyone played in Queen Lennox's kingdom. Everyone except for King Jonah. This playground is mine, hollered King Jonah. It is not, shouted Queen Lennox. It's all mine. And just like that, the playground was divided in two. King Jonah and Queen Lennox each made a plan to grow their kingdoms. They conquered small things. Push, said King Jonah. Harder! Spin, said Queen Lennox. Faster, faster! And big things. Climb, shouted King Jonah. Higher, hollered Queen Lennox. They even tried to conquer Augustine's dog, Sir Hamilton Humphrey Hildebrand III. Stay, hollered King Jonah. Fetch, shouted Queen Lennox. King Jonah and Queen Lennox claimed the entire playground until there was nothing left to conquer and no friends to play with. Conquering is complicated, said King Jonah. Yeah, said Queen Lennox. Super complicated. So they made a new plan. They took down the royal flags. They gave back their kingdoms. Jonah stopped being king. Lennox stopped being queen. We're done conquering, said Jonah. We cross our hearts and promise to never be rulers again, said Lennox. And just like that, the playground was fun again. Everyone was happy, except for Augustine. And Sir Hamilton Humphrey Hildebrand III. Thank you for sharing that story with me today. So when we were reading it, what did you notice about what happened on the playground when people in the group made rules about how everyone could play together? What happened to the group when those rules went away and instead they made promises about how they were going to behave? What do you think will happen at the end now that Augustine has decided to break those promises? As we go through the rest of the service today, I invite you to think 
about how covenants help make us all feel safe, welcome, and loved in our community and what kind of covenants or promises that you can make with the people in your own life. And now we enter a time of mindfulness, of meditation and prayer. Let's first be mindful of the joys and concerns of this congregation and the world. Bonnie shares that a clergy friend of hers, who is an associate minister at another church in another religious tradition, recently decided in a sermon to speak truth about white supremacy and systemic racism. It upset the congregation, and he is not getting good support from his senior pastor. So we share his concern for true equity in our society and for his struggle in speaking truth to power. We note, of course, that February is Black History Month, and we share his desire for true equity in our society. And as always, we remember the unspoken concerns in our congregation, and we know that. The light of the sacred shines into the dark and broken places of our lives and all life. And now let's take a deep breath together. Mindful that in this common act, we declare our interdependence with each other and with all. Now let's sing to open our hearts. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour, gathered here in one strong body, gathered here in the struggle and the power, spirit drawn near, gathered here in the mystery of the hour, Gathered here in one strong body, Gathered here in the struggle and the power, Spirit drawn near. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour, Gathered here in one strong body, Gathered here in the struggle and the power, Spirit drawn near, Spirit drawn near, Spirit drawn When we go into the silence, you may use either Facebook comments, Zoom chat, or YouTube notes to name anyone who needs prayer, remembering or honoring in our communion of names. We begin with a meditation from the Reverend Hope Johnson, followed by prayer. We are gathered together. We are one. A diverse group of proudly kindred spirits here not by coincidence, but because we choose to journey together. We are active and proactive. We care deeply. We live our love as best we can. We are one, working, eating, laughing, playing, singing, sharing, and rejoicing, getting to know each other, taking risks, opening up, questioning, seeking, searching struggling, making mistakes, paying attention, living our answers, learning to love our neighbors, learning to love ourselves, apologizing and forgiving with humility, being forgiven through grace, creating beloved community. Together, we are one. Spirit of life, spirit of love, we open our hearts to dare to live as creators of beloved community. Grant us the vision, the strength, the flexibility, the patience we need for the living of these days. 
As always, we are mindful of the sufferings in our community and in the world. We pray for all those who are hurting in any manner of body, mind, or spirit. For these and for all, we pray for a greater sense of peace, fulfillment, health, vigor, relationship, abundance, and sufficiency in all things. Now, with the private meditations of our hearts, we enter the silence in the communion of names. And so it is, and so it shall be. Blessed be. Amen. Today's anthem is the song, You Walk With Me, from the Broadway musical, Full Monty. Originally, it was a love duet between two men. But I chose it because I think it also speaks to the greater idea that we never walk alone, as long as we're walking together in beloved community. Is it the wind over my shoulder? Is it the wind that I hear gently whispering? You're walking with me, walking together. One of our great scholars in Unitarian Universalism is the late Conrad Wright, who wrote a book called Walking Together about 
our tradition of congregational governance and covenant. He described church in our tradition as being on a journey together, going somewhere, having a destination, mindful that we are companions on the journey, that it's not just about any one of us, it's about all of us. And further, it is walking together in our differences. One of the distinctives in our way of being religious is that we are theologically and philosophically diverse. Another of our forebears from many centuries ago at the time of the Protestant Re Reformation, Francis David, is famous for saying, we need not think alike to love alike. It's words that still have resonance in the 21st century very much. We hold fiercely to our freedom of belief and our spiritual diversity in our congregations. So how do a diverse people hold together? Perhaps it is to be bound in freedom or freely bound. We are organized, each of our congregations, as self-sustaining democratic congregations. This means we finance our own congregation, we elect our leaders, we call our ministers. This church is currently in the process of, of, uh, of calling a settled minister for the next uh, generation of ministry. And the professional minister and the various lay leaders share the ministry of the church. So in a sense, everyone is a minister. And being a religious community, we are focused on a transcendent vision or mission for the congregation, a purpose, a noble purpose, an aspirational way of being church in the world. We are active in the world to build, in the words of Martin Luther King, beloved community. And in fact, beloved community is our worship theme throughout February. So in talking about building beloved community, we began today to talk about the concept of covenant because it's foundational in our ideas of building beloved community. We use covenant because first, it's our heritage in our liberal and living tradition. We have inherited that from our forebears from centuries ago. It, was, it has been our way of being church now for hundreds of years. Just a little bit of history on that. Unitarianism in America began as the liberal wing of the old Puritan congregational churches in New England, formerly splitting off in 1825 to form the the first Unitarian Association, American Unitarian Association. When the Puritans arrived in America in the 1600s, they were separating from the Church of England. Uh, they weren't concerned with the theology of the Church of England. They were fine with it theologically. They were separating and they were protesting the hierarchical and oppressive methods of governance in that tradition. They were searching for a more free and more faithful way of being church together. So their churches in America were gathered in a different way by mutual consent and mutual benefit. Now, certainly by today's standards, these old Puritans don't look anything like us and did not, their churches aren't as democratic as ours is, and certainly their theological differences were far different from our Unitarian Universalist congregations but they planted a seed without fully realizing it, laying a foundation for the values of congregational governance and theological diversity to emerge in succeeding generations. Wanting to find a more mutually beneficial way of being church together, they needed a mechanism to govern themselves. They were wanting to leave behind the old hierarchical mechanisms in England, and they found that in the concept of covenant. In these old churches, it was common that when a church first gathered, they would sit down and work out a covenant on, uh, on what their values were, what their vision was. Sometimes they became statements of belief in what they believed, but their focus was on how they were going to be church together. 
So today, in the 21st century, in Unitarian Universalism, we use the concept of covenant in essentially two ways, two interrelated but distinct ways. There are two kinds of covenants. The first are aspirational covenants, covenants that focus on ultimate values and verities. Not a statement of belief, but an affirmation of values, of who and what a congregation wants to be in service to the world on why they are church together. One of the best examples of that kind of covenant and one of the very common covenants in some of our churches is the old Williams Covenant. It was published in a 1933 worship book by L. Griswold Williams, who was a Universalist minister. Today, we're honored to have some members of one of our small groups, Whirl, that's Women Unitarian Universalist Relishing Life, who, uh, are here to share with us in a reading of this common covenant among our churches, the Williams Covenant. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest of truth is its sacrament. And service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace. Seek knowledge and freedom. To serve human need to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other. Thus do we covenant with each other. Do you hear in those words the vision of the covenant, the quest of truth and knowledge and freedom, religious freedom, service and serving human need, witness and action in the world? to the end of growing in harmony with a larger sense of life and sacred life. Thus do we covenant to do all of this. This is why, according to this covenant, we are church. Then there are other familiar covenants in our tradition, and this is just one of them, and I'm not offering this as the, the best way, the best covenant there is, just as a very common covenant among us. The other style of covenant are less aspirational and more, well, more practical. Covenants uh, among working teams, boards, committees on how they want to be with each other. They delineate about how they want to go together on their work. Uh, often very basic things like uh, showing up on time, reading all the reports to be prepared for a meeting, uh, not talking over one another if that's been a challenge for them. Things like that, just practical ways of being in relationship together so that they can ac accomplish the ultimate aim of that team's work. One such covenant that we use in this congregation uh, that the board is reintroducing to the church is the Covenant of Right Relations. You'll be hearing more about that. It was approved several years ago and in recent times has not been emphasized. It outlines some understandings of the various relationships in the church, for example, member to member, member to minister, uh, member to self, things like that, and what the purpose of that relationship is or how it can best be accomplished, very concise, very simply. Again, you'll be hearing more about that. And we are also encouraging various teams and committees to uh, develop a covenant with that team on, on how you want to be together. Again, you'll be hearing more about that as we go forward. Today, if you're interested, at four o'clock, there is an online Zoom meeting, a round table with the board where you can just come and ask questions generally, not just about covenants, about anything you want to better understand the work of the board and what they're, they're doing, but including covenants, certainly. That's at four o'clock today on Zoom. Links were sent out in the uh, in your Friday weekly update in the last two weeks, as a matter of fact. So we, we hope if you're curious about what goes on at the, in the Board of Trustees to please come to that meeting. One way to think about a covenant is about structure. Now, I'm struck that this is a congregation that now for years has been engaged in the renovation of your physical buildings on campus. The sanctuary renovation is just about finished. A number of you came out last Sunday for a drive up and and got a, got a self-guided tour of the sanctuary that's, that's just about finished, not, not quite completely. So pretty soon your campus will be uh, 
the physical campus will be completely renovated with brand, not brand new buildings, old buildings, but buildings that have been beautifully renovated. And covenant is a structure of the church, not a physical structure, certainly. It can be called an invisible structure. And if we look at covenant as an invisible structure within which we operate, what might it look like? Well, the foundation of covenant might be trust, that we understand we're all in this together and so we have to trust one another. The walls provide boundaries naturally. So uh, the walls of this covenant structure might lay out the healthy behaviors, the actions and responsibilities that shape our community. Again, how we will treat each other, the things that shape the culture of this church. The walls, of course, hold up the roof. A purpose of a roof is to protect you from the elements, from rain and from, from overly harsh sunshine. And so the roof of this covenantal structure might provide safe space beneath for all of us, people of all ages, of all abilities, of all identities, so that all have a safe space for, for spiritual exploration. In these walls, of course, are doors and windows. We are not an exclusive community sheltered from the world, so there are doors that allow the freedom to enter the structure and to depart. They welcome others. The doors are open to all honest seekers of, 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 from various kinds of belief. The windows on these walls look out on the rest of the world. They let in fresh air and sunshine. So they're open to wisdom and beauty from the world. So this structure of covenant is because of all that fresh air and sunshine constantly coming in, is never completely finished. It's always in process. It's always in formation. It's always being revised to meet the demands of new times. Just as our buildings have been renovated, our relationships likewise need constant care and tending. This is why we covenant, because we need each other to be church and we need the world. Indeed, the Reverend Victoria Safford calls covenants declarations of interdependence. In an article in the UU World magazine several years ago, she said, when we welcome babies in our church, when we welcome new members into the community, when we celebrate the love of beaming couples, when we ordain new ministers, we speak not in the binding language of contract, but in the life-sustaining fluency of covenant, from covenir to travel together. We will walk together with you. We will walk together with each other, toward the lives we mean to lead, toward the world we mean to have a hand in shaping, the world of compassion, equity, freedom, joy, and gratitude. Covenant, she says, is the work of intimate justice. Indeed, covenant is the art of walking together, of traveling together on this journey we call church. Next week, we'll continue the theme of covenant, looking at how the idea of covenant plays out in our National Association of Churches and how it's helped to shape us as an association of churches, especially in these days. So as we continue to explore covenant, we will discover new and deeper ways of being with each other in the journey of church. So may it be. Amen.
embraces all the living. Come wander at this love that comes to life, where words of freedom are with humor spoken, and people keep no score of wrong and guilt, but will that human bonds remain unbroken. Join then the movement of the love that frees, till people of whatever race or nation will truly be themselves, stand on their feet. See eye to eye with laughter We extinguish the flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Remember, my friends, we haven't just been to church. We are the church. And when the church is the church, it is nothing more, it is nothing less, it is nothing other than a place in the world of deep commitment, deep community, and deep covenant. A place that nourishes each and all. As you go about all the responsibilities of your life this week, be the church, be covenant in action. Go in grace. Amen. Spirit of life, come unto me, sing in my heart all the stirrings of God.